The Northern Territory, or NT, of Australia has a lot of space and plenty of sunlight, while 4,374 kilometers away, Singapore is severely lacking in space and wants to shift to renewable energy sources. This has led to one of the most ambitious renewable energy projects in the world at $23 billion to power Singapore from Australia. Despite being one of the most developed countries in the world, Singapore is small in size, not to mention densely populated. This planned country has on its agenda a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 36% by 2030, compared to 2005 levels. This is quite an ambitious goal, as 96% of its energy comes from burning natural gas. There are not many alternatives for this nation to provide energy to its 5.7 million residents either. For one, the nation does not have enough space for solar arrays. Secondly, there are no rivers suitable for harnessing hydropower. Wind farms are a no-go, to the low average wind speeds and the country's location along one of the world's narrowest shipping lanes takes care of that. Geothermal energy sources? Non-existent. Meanwhile, Australia is the driest continent in the world after Antarctica. 35% of its landmass is covered by desert. Countries like Australia, who lead the world in global fossil fuel trade come under the radar more often as the world takes up the conversation about climate change and sustainability. The land down under is the third biggest exporter of fossil fuel in the world and ranks fifth for CO2 emissions. It is responsible for about 1.4% of greenhouse gas emissions. But the export business of coal and gas might have a new alternative. Ross Garnot, professor of economics at the University of Melbourne and chairman of the Australian-German Energy Transition Hub, analyzes that Australia has the best renewable energy sources in the developed world and it could very well expand its energy production while reducing global emissions. All these shortcomings combined with the abundance of space and sunshine in Australia gets you a project that works for both the countries. It aligns perfectly to meet the high demand of renewable energy from Singapore, which it cannot meet on its own or without a huge cost. Australia, on the other hand, has a large expanse of land that was practically useless up until now. NT Chief Minister Michael Gunner said, The Sun Cable Project is a game-changer for the territory and will further our reputation around the world as a place to do business and invest. The energy company, backed by Atlassian Corp., co-founder Mike Cannon Brooks and billionaire Andrew Forrest, soon scaled up its plans by as much as 40%. Not to mention, the falling costs of solar power generations in the last few years have also made this project more feasible. The size of the Powell Creek solar precinct was increased to 17 to 20 gigawatts in capacity from the previous plan of 14 GW. The storage system has also been upped from 30 GW hours to 36 to 42 GW hours. This has also increased the estimated cost of the project from $22 billion to about $30 billion. Despite the scale, Cannon Brooks was confident about the project. There's nothing engineering-wise in the individual component parts that says it can't be built. There is an economic model, that means the whole thing together could make it a very profitable project for the Northern Territory, for the shareholders, and for Singapore and consumers. This is all theoretically possible. So, what do we know about this project? The Australia-Asia power link is huge in scale and size. So huge that the solar farm on the 12,000 hectare site at Powell Creek Station will be the largest solar farm in the world. It is nearly 10 times larger than the world's current largest solar power installation, the 2.245 GW Badla Solar Park in India. It will export electricity to Darwin as well as Singapore. The project proposal brings in high-tech companies like 5B, which would employ the solar array prefabrication technology in order to build the solar farm at a quicker pace. These pre-assembled solar panels will be delivered to the site in containers, where they will be assembled on site. The power will be generated by the solar panel arrays. A portion of this power will be stored in large batteries on site, with batteries in Darwin and Singapore to ensure a 24-hour power supply. From the Powell Creek site, an 800km 6.4 GW overhead transmission line will carry the solar energy to the Darwin converter site, where an estimated 800 MW will be supplied to Darwin, but the majority of the lines will be pushed on to cable transition facilities at Gunpoint Beach. From here, a 4,200km undersea cable will connect this renewable energy source through the Indonesian seas to its main market, the city-state of Singapore. Griffin describes the submarine cable as the greatest unsung technology development. It is extraordinary technology that is going to change the flow of energy between countries. 
It is going to have profound implications and the extent of those implications hasn't been widely identified, he added. The Sun Cable will run through Indonesian waters to reach Singapore. Indonesia has announced their support for the project after Sun Cable said that they would invest $2.50 billion into knowledge sharing and strategic investment into Jakarta, including building a marine repair base in Indonesia. The export of the energy will be carried out by a high-voltage direct current cable which will connect northern Australia to Singapore. This is not the first time such a cable has been used. A similar cable connects the central Chinese region to its eastern cities. As we already know that the idea is successful, it has given the project a head start. Its export capacity would be 2.2 GW, or more than four times the current Basslink interconnector linking Tasmania and mainland Australia. It would also be 10 times longer at 4,200 kilometers. This project will result in the biggest dispatchable renewable electricity system in the world. The solar farm will have a 30 GWh storage facility to enable the dispatch of power at all times. This project will export approximately $2 billion worth of solar energy to Singapore. What are the benefits and cons of this project? The project aims to supply as much as 15% of Singapore's electricity requirements and power up to 3 million homes. This could reduce the state's emissions by around 6 million tons of carbon dioxide a year and 480 million tons over the project's 70-year run. This would help Singapore meet its 2030 goals of a cleaner state. The project is set to create 1,500 construction jobs and 350 operational jobs. It will provide $8 billion in investment in Northern Australia. Not only will this power link make Australia a world leader, it will also create significant economic and employment opportunities here at home with about $8 Australian dollars billion of the $22 Australian dollars billion investment to be injected directly into Australia, said Andrews in a statement. The Environmental Impact Statement, or the ICE Report, has identified impacts of the project on vulnerable plant species like Darwin cycads and Typhonium praetermissum at the converter site. However, the proponents of the project said that it won't affect fauna, like the greater bilby, the yellow-spotted monitor, and eight other endangered shorebird species. Along with this, the undersea cables are also not said to have any effect of extra noise and electromagnetic fields on turtles, dugongs, pygmy blue whales and whale sharks. If this project is successful, Sun Cable could have a bright future with other ASEAN nations that require this renewable energy. Not only will this strengthen Australia's economic relations with ASEAN, it could also help the nation break free from its export dependence on China. ASEAN Energy Requirements The demand for energy in ASEAN countries is increasing exponentially, growing at twice the pace as it is in China. By 2040, the ASEAN energy requirement is presumed to grow by 60%. Why is this demand growing so quickly? Well, the major factors are the rising incomes and the rapid pace of industrialization and urbanization. In just the last two decades, the ASEAN countries have seen a huge migration from the countryside to the urban areas as people shifted from agriculture to industrialization, around 52% of the ASEAN population lives in urban areas. This lifestyle has also led to consumer spending on comforts and technologies of modern society, such as air conditioners and automobiles. As a result, the regional governments are trying their best to increase energy investments and make sure that low availability of energy does not turn into a loss for businesses. Also, ASEAN will see a population increase of almost 120 million by 2040 the population may become 770 million. This will contribute to a regional GDP of US$20 trillion. This rapid growth of energy supply will transform ASEAN from a net exporter of fossil fuels to a net importer. Development Timeline The design and engineering work is expected to be completed by the end of 2023. The construction of the project will begin at the end of 2023, after the completion of ICE, governmental approvals and concluding outstanding funding agreements. If everything goes according to plan, Australia would start exporting renewable energy to Singapore by 2027. What are your opinions about this project? Let us know in the comments. Like and share this video if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to our channel for more such content.